All right, just the probably the last one of these uh, micro squirt wiring videos. This is more or less what it's going to look like, minus the old harness and uh, obviously ignition coils. But in the last couple of videos, I had not even touched the um, ignition coil wiring harness. But now it's done. I just tested it. We're all good. Um, wasted spark, LS1 coils, and I'm not really proud of this bracket, but at least it's you know on there securely. It's it could be worse, I guess. But that's all it is. Um, there's the connector for it. It goes down and up here. I kind of left some length in it because I might need to go back and add capacitors at some point between the ground and the power wire, like a really small, you know, we're talking microfarads, but they seem to fire okay, so maybe I won't. Anyhow, uh, nothing really groundbreaking. This is temporary, just going to the coil for, uh, ign you know, keyed 12 volts. Eventually that will go right to the switch or something along those lines once the coil is gone. So this is just kind of a stand-in. And then this is kind of the... I, uh, I I wanted to leave a power wire in. This just gives switched 12, or I guess it's fused and switched 12 volts. The butt connector is just on there to keep it from touching anything while it's in the engine bay, like a ground. But it's just kind of if I ever add anything that needs 12 volts, it'll kind of be somewhere probably tucked back behind the firewall uh, inside the car. So I'll deal with that. I guess, after the car is running. Now this is kind of the the final form, I guess, of the, the main harness for the sensors. Everything has this conduit on it, even the you know little map sensor. You've got the intake air and the same old you know sensors that have kind of been here. The ground clips on the bottom. I need to quick disconnect any harness runs. This is for the Hall Effect sensor, and it's kind of just stuck Awkwardly, this is going to be redone, but it's kind of just stuck behind this upper radiator hose Just because I didn't want it to possibly this wiring to hit the timing belt because I'm starting it without a belt cover So that actually won't be like that for real once the car is on the road. This ground's connected down here um, Pretty much just routine stuff The injector harness is hooked up. Those are the injectors. Just tested them a couple minutes ago. Everything works as it should. A um, little, little bit more cleaning up to do back here, but that's not really a big deal. Um, the car is pretty much ready to start. I've just got to hook up the, well, install the uh, new injectors, install the 951 throttle body, and throw together some tables to start the car. You know, you have to set all the like cranking pulse width for the injectors and yada yada yada. I have to come up with an excuse for an ignition map. But all the wiring's pretty much been done. This is still gonna use that little idle air valve back there. Uh, oh yeah, I wanted to mention this is something that wasn't. I kind of had to do a little bit of homework uh, to figure this out. So this is the six-pin connector for the 951 TPS, and the pins are plus five volts. Or yeah, you want to use five volts. You tap into the TPS. Or sorry. Yeah, it has its own 5-volt wire for the TPS. You tap the MAPS 5-volt from it. Sorry to be confusing. So it goes 5 volts, and then use a signal ground. You just, that's one of these, you know, that goes into my ground place thing. And lastly, the third pin is the signal wire, the TPS signal. And those all just go, uh, those are just the first three pins. And it even says, like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on the TPS, which is over there somewhere. So that's kind of just the way that goes, and it calibrates really nicely. You don't use the idle switch or the wide open throttle switch, you just use the tensiometer side of it. So that's it.